What's My Line? Brought to you by Westinghouse. You can be sure if it's Westinghouse. And now, let's all play What's My Line? And now, live from New York, let's meet our What's My Line panel. First, the delightful star of stage, screen, and television, Miss Phyllis Newman. It's my pleasure now to introduce a young man who's a very talented actor and comedian whose new film opens in August, and the title is, are you ready? Bang, Bang, You're Dead, Mr. Tony Randall. Yes, I'm ready. Oh. It is a great pleasure as ever to introduce a charming and brilliant lady who this coming Sunday morning will be presented an honorary Doctor of Humanities degree at Cayuca College near Syracuse, New York, Arlene Francis. Mm -hmm. And now a gentleman who is a doctor of all trades, but tomorrow morning he is doing a commencement speech and becoming a Doctor of Laws at Western Maryland College in Westminster. Here's Bennett Sir. You can see this panel is dying by degrees. Oops. <laughs> <laughs> well, our, our panel moderator has been up in his favorite state again this week, New Hampshire, where the sap is running. <laughs> and here he is. I mean, here's John Charles Day. <laughs> That's no way for a, an incipient doctor of laws to be talking, I must say, this half is running. We had our commencement up at Tilton School this weekend, and we had Governor King honor us by making our commencement address Bennett, and he agreed with our speech teachers, uh, rule for commencement addresses. I don't know if we could make any sense with you with it. It's be brave, be brief, and be seated. <laughs> That'll help you tomorrow. I think that's sound advice. Good. Now, it's nice to have uh, Miss Newman Thank and uh, Mr. Randall with us and to celebrate their being here. I think you all get your blindfolds out there. Good oh, reasons no. why we will want you to blindfold yourselves on this uh, first go around. We're going for an occupation, but uh, at the same time, we feel that the possibility that, uh, so get your blindfolds on. There's a possibility that one or more of you might uh, learn too much, if you can see. So if you put your blindfolds on, we'll get ready to start things off. And later on, we'll have a famous mystery guest before the panel, too. Uh, blindfolds all in place now, panel? Yes, yes, sir. Then it's time to meet our first contestant. Will you enter and sign in, please? I think since we're not going to give you any further information, we should, however, take a, an opportunity to let the audience at home and the audience in the theater know exactly what our contestant's line is. <laughs> All right, panel, I guess the best thing to do is to uh, tell you that our, our contestant is salaried and deals in a service. And with that beginning, we'll uh, begin with uh, Phyllis Newman. Thank you. Um, uh, from that reception that you got, can I assume that if you walked down the street, people would mob you and say hi and know who you were? No. <laughs> There's a great deal of modesty in that answer. Let's give you a qualified yes, and you can go on. Sir. A qualified yes. Are you in the world of entertainment? Mm, yes. <laughs> do you always speak like that? <laughs> um, when you do what you do, do people pay a, 
No, do they sit home and watch you on television? No. No? Well, I would have to say They that, never uh, watch you on television? Well, uh, you say ever watch. We would have to agree there's a possibility that, uh, <laughs> that sometimes, you know, we'd, we'd, you get another qualified yes. Are you in any way musical as well? Are you in any way musical? Mm, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, how old are you? No. <laughs> no, no, no. What I mean to say is, is your age somewhere between 35 and 40? <laughs> no. That's no. one down and <laughs> not to go, Mr. Randall. Uh, there was such laughter when your occupation was announced that may I assume that the occupation we are to get is a sideline of yours? No. <laughs> or at least, at least we hate to put it that way. <laughs> I, I don't know where I am. Well, neither do I. That makes two of us. <laughs> well, um, Actually, our contestant has so many um, uh, areas of activity that... Uh, but there was laughter. Be... There was laughter when the occupation was introduced as if it were a surprise, so that if it were a famous actor, the fact that he raises hogs might be what we're after, something like that. Well, in that context, there's, a, I think, area for you to play, right? I see. <laughs> uh, I also had the funny feeling that there might be more than one person there, is there? No. Two down, a day to go, Miss Francis. Are you very familiar to audiences and have you been for some years? Mm, yes. Uh, might Rome burn while you fiddle? <laughs> <laughs> yes, for uh, heaven. Uh, <laughs> I could tell from Bennett Surf's silly grin on his face <laughs> that he knew it the minute I walked on. As you, you know. opened your mouth, Jack. Uh, <laughs> yeah, the minute I opened. You know what I wanted to do? That's why I kept hitting you. I all lost the time. my right arm. Yeah, that Jack no no matter what you were going to ask me about whether I've ever been on television, I was going to say no. Because you have to guess. First place, my name on there was not Jack Bennett. What was it, Jack? Kabelski, my right name. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm a violin soloist, and that's what you'd have to get. All, all I was going to ask was, does Stradivarius whirl in his grave when every time you pick up a fiddle? Uh, How would you have answered that, Jack? Does Stradivarius what? Whirl in his grave every time you pick up a fiddle. Well, Only with applause. <laughs> not Stradivarius. Now, it could be that Guanarius would. <laughs> being jealous that I'm not playing a Stradivarius. This could happen. But you are between 35 and 40. Yeah. Easily. <laughs> well, <and> easily. <laughs> I'm easily between that. And, Phyllis, our defense there is that that is perfectly true as Jack Benny. But as I Kubelski, the concert violinist, no. Oh, well, of course. There we have more age, right? right. And, in fact, I'm giving age. a concert February... No, February. Next month, July 23rd, <laughs> at the, uh, what's the big place here? Out the Harmonica. The oh, Lewiston Stadium. Lewiston Stadium. Lewiston Stadium. 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 Lewiston Stadium. Lewiston Stadium. Lewiston Stadium. Well, and I'm gonna... frightened to death. You know why? It's the only concert that I will ever have given where I get paid. Oh. <laughs> and to think that I'm charging them for this <laughs> is murder. <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> well, you're going to give a concert tomorrow. If I read my Sunday Times, you're going to be up at... Uh, at Westbury. Uh, and, uh, yeah, Westbury, yeah. Long Island Music Fair. Yeah, I'm you going to play... You'll be there tomorrow? That's right. You're, you're going to be there for a week? You're going to be there every night, aren't you? Yeah, for, for six week? nights. But you're going to play, yeah. aren't you? And then I'm going to Dallas, Texas to play for two weeks. If any of you folks are going to be in Dallas, <laughs> I'll be there for two weeks at the State Farm Auditorium. I have tickets now, in case you want to buy them. <laughs> oh, I thought you were just going to distribute them. Huh? You mean these are for sale? Huh? My tickets? Yeah. N yeah. Yeah. Because, I'll tell you why. They're really not for sale. I'm giving them away. Because I'm actually Kabelski. 
<laughs> I'm not Jack. Not Manning. Jack. Manning. No. Fine. Well, good. That's good. You've been a wonderful Kabelski, Jack. And thank this you. was great fun for us, and thanks for being a part of it, because we You're did welcome. have some fun with that cat. <laughs> another contestant for you in just a moment. And Wait. And now to meet our next contestant, will you enter and sign in, please? Christine Bird. Right, ma'am? Miss or Mrs. Burns? Mrs. Mrs. Burns, where are you from? Uh, Shelbyville, Tennessee. Shelbyville, Tennessee. Nice to have you with us, Mrs. Burns. May I present our panel? Thank you. Now, if you'll join me over here, ma'am, we'll let the audience in the theater and the audience at home know exactly what your line is. Panel, we can tell you that Mrs. Burns is self-employed and deals in a product. And we'll begin the general questioning with uh, Bennett, sir. Mrs. Burns is Shelbyville, Shelbyville in the eastern part of Tennessee or the western, near Memphis or, or near uh, the uh, other side of the state. Near Memphis. Near Memphis. Is the product that you're concerned with uh, especially connected in any way with the region that you come from? Mm, no. No, I wouldn't think so, Bennett. One down and nine to go, Miss Newman. Uh, may I, might I use your product? Mm, no. No? Sorry. Well, <laughs> with, with Mrs. Burns' permission, I would yes. say that there are circumstances under which it would be possible that you would wish to make use of it, and I don't know enough, actually, about your overall avocations as well as um, other interests to say definitely yes or no but if with your permission we we'll say it's, it's, possible it's possible that you could make well use. then might i assume that my husband adolf may use the product more than i would mm, no <laughs> no right. i would think if you were likely to use it um, it would be pretty much I six think. up and a half a dozen down mr randall two down and eight to go is this a product then that's used by animals mm, yes mm. Is it consumed? No. Three down and seven to go, Miss Frank. Is the product itself animal? You mean animal, vegetable, mineral? Yeah. Mm. Yes. Is the product, when you deal with it, alive? Mm. No. Four down and six to go, Mr. Sir. Mrs. Burns, is the product used by a four-legged animal? Mm. Yes. A domestic animal? Yes. Is the animal larger than a dog? Mm, yes. Is the is it larger than a small mule? <laughs> it can oh, be. Can be. Mm -hmm. uh, it is a domestic animal. Uh, does anybody ever ride on this animal? Mm, they could. They could. Mm -hmm. They could. could. Mm -hmm. Are you trying to steer me away from horses? We're not trying to steer you away. Well, that's what I had in mind. Mm -hmm. is, the, is your product used by horses? Oh, yes, yeah, I would say, too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it is not consumed, you tell me. That's right. Mm -hmm. Is it used, therefore, for the well-being of the animal? What particular area of well-being had you in mind? Uh, when the animal is either resting or eating. Would he have a particular need, resting or eating? I think this wouldn't no. apply to resting or eating. That's very good, though, Bennett. Five down and five to go. <laughs> be brave, be brief. <laughs> Miss Newman. Is it something that you either put on the horse or apply to the horse? Mm -hmm. It is something, then, the maximum that you put on. Is it made of a, a leather-like substance? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Is it in the harness, uh, what do you call the thing saddle. in the nose? Bridle, saddle, uh, 
uh, shoe department. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what else you call them. The bridal saddle shoe department. Yes, yeah, bridal mm -hmm. saddle or ribbon thing department. <laughs> well, <laughs> actually, I, I I don't think it's not in the bridal saddle or shoe department. Although you might go to that department to get this, it's not in that department. You see what I mean? No, I don't either. Six out and four to go. Mr. Randall, you want to take a shot of this because you're in the general area. You should be able to get it's it. It's leather trappings for a horse of some sort. Mm. Reins? Reins, no, Miss Francis. Well, it certainly isn't a blanket because that isn't leather. Uh, so don't turn the card. <laughs> <laughs> uh, does it go anywhere around the head of the horse? It does go uh, around the head of the horse sometimes, doesn't it? Yeah. I don't know. Maybe it's a horse collar. My friend here is very... <laughs> Right. Mrs. Burns is the owner of the Southern Collar Company in Shelbyville, one of the two, two, really two, two companies making, and the only, only, the only lady manufacturer of horse collars, and she makes the small ones, you know, for pony, Shetland ponies, up to the big ones for gray horses and, and uh, hard pulling, and they're really quite, quite lovely things, and they run what price, you said, from $20 to $60? But isn't that all attached? The reins and the thing and everything? Well, the reins sometimes go through, but the, oh, the but collar is just you stick it over oh, the head. Okay. Or you can so. bring it up over the feet, but it's much more difficult. <laughs> <that way. laughs> In spite of the different sizes it comes. Thank you very much, Mrs. Burns. We had a lot of fun with that. Thank you. Bennett would have said that's a horse of another collar. Yeah. <laughs> and we'll meet tonight's mystery guest in just a moment, but first, this message. And now the special feature of our program, the appearance of our mystery challenger, for which, as you know, the panel is all right, always blindfolded. Have you got the blindfolds all on again, panel? I yeah. can, yeah. Good, then let's uh, ask our mystery challenger to enter and sign in, please. Reminder panel, remember that in this case, we have uh, a different form of questioning. One question at a time, in turn, moving clockwise. And we'll begin with uh, Arlene Francis. Well, from that reaction, I think it's Jack Benny again and himself. <laughs> <laughs> um, are you a theater personality? Si, senorita. Oh, nice. Mr. Sir? Uh, Judging by the squeals of delight, uh, would you call yourself, uh, maybe John will have to answer this, a handsome actor? Yes, indeed. Miss Newman? Um, have you ever appeared in a, are you appearing in either a motion picture at the moment or a television series? No, my dear, no. One down and nine to go, Mr. Randall. Hmm, a television series, you say? Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Oh. So we'll give you, we'll give you that uh, half. We'll leave oh. it over anyway. Oh, thank you. Ah. Mr. Randall. Ah. Uh, do you sing? Si, senor. Miss Francis. Are you in New York to make a special appearance? Here? Yes, 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 I am. Mm -hmm. Mr. Sir? Was there a full-page advertisement for you in the New York Times amusement section this morning? Uh, not in the Times. <laughs> the news. <laughs> the news. <coughs> in the news? See? Si. Yes, Miss Newman? Gee, I didn't see the news today. <laughs> um, do you have dark hair and terrific white teeth? <laughs> Just a moment. Conference. Yes? Uh, mm -hmm. Oh, well, I still don't know who it is. <laughs> <laughs> Jody? <laughs> uh, uh, may I take a guess? Yeah. I, I think it's Robert Goulet. That'll be... Uh, <laughs> two down a base to go, Miss Francis. Try again, old boy. <laughs> I didn't see the news either, and I wish I'd seen the Herald Tribune. Ah. But uh, uh, are you... Uh, 
uh, in New York because you are going to appear in a nightclub here, the Copacabana? See. Si. Uh, we Edward. all know the doctor. <laughs> yeah. 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 Vincent. Yeah. Dr. Casey. <laughs> He's going to open at the Copacabana on Thursday. That's right. And sing. And you know, the, of course, you have to... No sing. surgery, John. No surgery. No but surgery. You have to stop and think because you, you, you hear Vince's name and you say, oh, yes, of course, uh, Ben Casey acting. Yes, that was you. Also, he's made uh, he's made recordings. Oh yes, I, I know of them. I know them well, and they've done very well. But too. you haven't sung in a club before, have you, Mr. Edwards? Oh yes, I've uh, I I played Las Vegas a couple uh, of years he's ago. He's just as I described him, though. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, white teeth. <laughs> yeah, I I studied them, and they were they're very white. <laughs> you were absolutely right. Though. Good ventures. Is it is this fun? This this new yes. this is a new career. By yeah, way. I, I yeah. like it. We're through. Uh, Cutting it up in the operating room. Now we're going to cut up on the nightclub floor. <laughs> <laughs> Can I ask you something? Did you, when you started your acting career, uh, before you you reached the pinnacle of success, did you take singing then, or is this something you decided oh, to do? I started as a singer. You did. Yeah, I used to work in the Borscht Belt years ago. For heaven's sake. <laughs> That's right. Singing with bands or, or singing, singing with anything? Solo? Harmonicas? <laughs> Harmonica and anything. Oh, so that it's it's uh, something that you picked up again rather yes. than to start it all over start again. Start it around again. Well, good fun. We hope worst you do. comes to worst, you can always pick up that scalpel again. I yeah. can always open an office yeah. at Cedars. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is good fun, and we hope you have as certainly hope you have as much fun singing as you must have had acting, and we hope you have as much success singing as you did acting. Thank you, John. Then you'll be a busy man for a long yes. time too. Play the nightclub circuit for a while. Right. Thanks very much. Thank you, Thanks. John. Nice to have you. Good night, good night, good night, good night. say, panel, that uh, we try to pull some tricks on you, but you've done very well so far tonight, and uh, so I give you some congratulations, and we'll all be back after this word. Sure. Now, Tony, we can't let you get away tonight be without finding out what happened in India. You went to India as the only American attending the India equivalent of our Oscar ceremony. That's right. The Indian film industry, which is the largest in the world, invited me to be their guest and their chief presenter. And I went as their guest and as the representative of the USIA, the United States Information Agency. Oh, and it was a fabulous experience. Spent a week in Bombay, met all the great stars of the Indian film industry, saw one of the most beautiful cities in the world. Well, now, do they have a... I, I'm sorry, Ben. Do they have the same sort of a ceremony that we have in Almost Hollywood? Almost exactly process? the same, yes. Is it a surprise, though, to the people, or do they know? They know. No, it's been announced already. I but, see. But uh, movies are so popular there that, that it's... All anyone uh, could think of this whole week in Bombay, there is no television, no very little radio, uh -huh. and movies are the principal, the only real source of popular entertainment. At the risk of embarrassing you, sir, may I say, I hardly think we could have sent a better representative. Ah. Thank you. Thank you for being with us tonight, and good night, Miss Phyllis Newman. Good night. It was a pleasure to be here as always. Good night, Tony. Good night, Phyllis. Good night, Arlene. Good night, Prince. Good night, Bennett. Doctor. Thank you, Doctor. <laughs> good night, John. Good night. By the way, Bennett's going out to Milwaukee on Thursday as a, a doctor, and probably he'll take his scalpel along, even though they make him a doctor of laws. And don't forget the rule of, of Governor John King of New Hampshire. Be brave, be brief, and be seated. Brief is the best. <laughs> brief is the best. Well, they're, they're lucky to have you, and many congratulations on your degree, and congratulations to you too, Arlene, and thanks to all of you for being with us on What's My Life. Television Network production in association with Mark Woodson and Bill Cotton. This is Johnny Olsen speaking.